Alright guys, what's up? Today we're going to be looking at creating a flat desk design in Illustrator. There's just one quick thing I want to show you called Adobe Color Themes or Adobe Color. And what this lets you do is import color themes, as you can see here, into Adobe Illustrator. Um, right down in the bottom corner here, um, which you can add by going Window and then just dragging it, pressing it here and then dragging it across. So the first thing I want to do is go File, New, and just create a document. I'm just going to call it Episode 2. Can't spell today. Episode 2. And you just want to make this a width of 1920 by 1080, because that's what's easiest to work in for this. And just leave everything else the same. And you just want to go OK. So what you're going to get is you're going to get this just black white thing. Now, if you're wondering, I have sort of changed the layout a wee bit from default. Basically, you can just click, drag, and you can just move things wherever you want. I just like this 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 layout because I find it easiest to work with, particularly when you've got lots of layers along here. Whoops. Then it, it just makes it easier to, to use. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to just grab a rectangle from the rectangle tool and just drag it out from the intersect right down to the other intersect. Now what you're seeing here is these wee green bits and what these do is they like snap into place and you can get these from view and if you just go to smart guides here and if you just put a tick on that it will snap it into place in corners and also halfway points and stuff which is really helpful um, because it means you don't have to measure everything out, but you can still get a sort of good-looking uh, design that's all in place. So I'm just going to pick a colour here. I'll just go with light blue, um, or a sort of light bluey green um, as my background colour. The first thing I want to do is I want to twirl this down and lock it by clicking the wee bit in between, the gap between the eye and the blue strip. And you just want to click here and it just puts a wee lock here which is, means that I can't move it about in here now. The next thing you want to do is you just want to grab a rectangle with the rectangle tool and you just want to drag it out like this. So this is going to be a notepad book thing um, because these are often found on a desk and stuff and you'll probably see these in, in professional designs and stuff for these. Um, um, so what you want to do is you just want to maybe colour this orange, I'll colour orange anyway, uh, in this example. You can just move about like this by holding space and then moving about like this. Oh, another thing to do is to turn off stroke. So if you just go up to the top left corner here, turn down stroke by pressing the wee down arrow next to it. And you might want to do that for this rectangle as well. So if you just unlock it, click on it and turn the stroke off for this as well. Lock it again. So I want to go on to this um, orange square rectangle here and you just want to grab it again or grab the tool along here and you just want to click, drag out until it looks around about in the middle of that. You then want to make it white. I've got a white colour ready here already. Uh, that didn't sound quite right but um, if I can get my words together. Uh, what you can do is you can just drag all of these right down here and that will make it white and you can just come off this. This is maybe a wee bit small actually so I'll just maybe just if you just select everything by doing that and then you can just drag out like this and I'll just move this into place. You can just you can drag to scale by pressing and holding shift and you just drag out from these wee edges here. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to put a kind of glaze on it. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a sec. So what you want to do is you want to go to here. This will say anchor over it in green. Drag along until it should tell you it's the center point. Here we go. So it'll say intersect. I just want to let go. You then just go down to appearance, which you can get in window. And you just click this. Click it again and we just go for a kind of light grey colour. You can then go to Opacity, change the thing that says Normal here to Multiply, and then maybe just turn the Opacity down on this a wee bit, because that's quite strong. 
um, that'll maybe be okay. Um, and so what you'll see is you get a kind of uh, sort of well, you can see that it's uh, it's two pages and uh, there's a sort of fold in the middle, and this also adds a kind of glossy finish to it, which uh, you get with these sort of flat designs, although it's not trying to sort of pretend to be to be 3D. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go to Rectangle Tool, click that, you want to drag out until you get a kind of long rectangle like this, maybe not quite as big as my one, release, and then you want to change the fill of this maybe to a kind of light grey colour, that looks okay. So you want to go back to your selection tool here, you want to press and hold Alt, click on it, drag down, and what you'll see is that there's nothing in between these, so what you can do now is if you go down to the bottom left here, and you'll see there's Blend Tool, or press W, if you double click on this, it gives you some options here. The first thing you want to change is spacing to specified steps, um, and what this basically means is how many of these things it's going to create in between both of these. So I'll maybe just go for eight and see how that looks. So you just leave the orientation the same because that's just when there's a curve. You just press OK, click on the first one, click on the second one, and it adds eight in between. That's actually worked out pretty well. Um, I can just click on it and maybe drag it in a little bit. And maybe just, if you hold Alt on these corners here or on the sides, and just drag in, it drags it into scale as well. Then you just want to do that. You then want to grab it again, press Alt, drag it across, and there you've got your other page. Now that's looking a wee bit dark, so I'll maybe just drag this underneath, and drag this one underneath as well. And now you can see it stands out more against the sort of glossy bit here. The final thing we want to do to the book is to maybe add just a wee bookmark here, um, which should help to, to add to the look. So if we just click here, drag down until we get a kind of bookmark tab look, and we'll just maybe colour this a sort of bluey sort of colour. That looks okay. And um, go to the pen tool. We'll click in between here where it says intersect like this, and click, go to the direct selection tool, uh, which is the wee white arrow up in the top left corner, click that, click on the point that you've just created, and then just use your arrow keys to move it up until there's a kind of triangle. Um, you then just want to move this into position where you want, not this one, you want to just click off that, click on this, and then just use the arrow keys to move it into position. Okay, so that's you got your first book. Now, this is actually, having said that, it's maybe a wee bit big. Uh, I'll just make this a little bit smaller. Oops. So, if I just use my shift to scroll down. Now, for the long shadow bit, which is very common in flat design, what you want to do is you just want to click on the back here, which is the orangey one. Now you can see which layer is selected in this by looking up here. So this one's got a wee blue square here, which means that it is selected. So to create this can be quite complex, so I'm just going to go through this quite slowly. First thing you want to do is you want to go to your Appearance tab, click on Fill. You want to press over here, dupl Duplicate Selected Item, drag this fill above. You then want to change the fill underneath here to a kind of grey colour here. You then you then want to go up to Effect and Distort and Transform. Transform. You want to change the Move Horizontal to 0.5 and the Vertical to 0.5 as well. You then want to maybe set the copies to around about 300 and if you just preview this you'll see we have a wee shadow here and this can be changed so it looks a bit better but we can do this by going to opacity change normal to multiply and 
the next thing you want to do is you just want to click on the fill again object or object sorry um, effect pathfinder add it's going to give you a sort of warning here if you just ignore that and press OK anyway you then want to grab the transform and move it above add and it'll just take a second to apply that and there you go you've added that on so in order to create a sort of fading effect um, so that it fades to this sort of point here what you want to do is you want to click the fill and then you want to click on your gradient tab I've just got it set here you can as I said before go to window and click here and drag it to wherever you want so what you need to do is you just need to click here and that activates gradient uh, and what you can do in here is you just want to double click the gradient slider and it will give you the option to turn it down a wee bit here so if I just turn this down to maybe a sort of light grey okay and the next thing you want to do is you want to change the angle here which is like a wee angle single single symbol and down and you just want to maybe go to 120 and it will give you a really nice effect here of a sort of fading shadow now obviously you can tweak this a little bit by going clicking back onto the orange rectangle going to gradient tool and you can just move the gradient back a little bit, forward a little bit, round a bit a bit if you want to until you're happy with the result I think I will make this a wee bit darker here rather than this really light grey you can also change it up here this little menu here and if it's on RGB just change it to grayscale and from here you can change the greys and I'll maybe turn this up a little bit okay so that looks a bit better so that's us got our book now the next thing you want to create is a keyboard now to create the keyboard you want to grab the rectangle tool again and draw a sort of keyboard shaped rectangle so a wee bit wider than the book release now because before we had it on gradient it's just going to create a gradient for us now it's not really what we want so I'm just going to go down to here and change this to a uh, grey and I like that grey there so I'll just leave it on this now to add all the keys you do have to to a certain extent do this all by hand so I may skip some of this through and just speed it up um, but I will just show you how to do the, the top row first so we'll just zoom in grab the rectangle tool again drag it out till we get something that resembles a key click or release even you want to just change that to a white by either dragging along here or clicking a color theme which has got white in it like I have there you then want to go to the center of your key press and hold alt and just drag it along oh, I'll just need to wait for it to go across here and put it in this corner here now what you want to do here is you then go back to your blend tool and click click here click here and you've got your keyboard now that is maybe too big a gap actually so what I think I'm going to do is just do control Z to undo it double click and I'll maybe make it 9 rather than 8 so again just click here click here and you've got your keys now what you want to do is in order to add for instance the next row hold alt click drag down and because if you look on a keyboard they're not all lined up then you can just drag in maybe a wee bit like this and maybe add for instance a caps lock here I'm not sure if it's on this row um, there's maybe actually a tab on this one here but basically that's the general idea of it I will just speed this bit up here quickly because there's no point in you sitting watching me add the keys in because this could take quite a while so I'll just speed this bit up here and go through it
Okay, so that's my keyboard finished here. And I'm just going to add a long shadow to it now. What I forgot to mention before was if I click this and then just drag it up into the graphic styles tab, which again you can get from the window uh, drop down bar on the top, and you just want to drag it and release it in here, and it will take a few seconds to add it, and then it adds it here. Now what this lets you do is avoid having to add this effect on, which takes ages in here, manually each time. So what you can do is you can just drag this out, place it on whatever you want. Now it will reset the color to orange, as you can see here. But what you can do here is in the appearance panel, just change it back to grey. Uh, there we go. And it will just take, just takes a second to, that's the wrong one. Whoops. Undo that. Click on this one and change this one to grey. Now obviously it takes a few seconds to do anything with objects that have got the shadow added to it. That's just to do with the way that it, because obviously it renders out the shadow each time, which takes a wee while and is quite heavy on your processor or whatever you're using. Uh, I think I actually use a, a graphics card to render this a little bit as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's GPU preview here. So the next thing I will want to add is a cup and a, a saucer as well for the cup. So the first thing, it's always best to work from back to front in Illustrator. So what you want to do is you just want to pick a center where you want to put the center of your cup. You just click and drag. And what you want to do is you want to press Shift and Alt and just drag out like this. And that's a pretty pretty good saucer size. You then want to go to the center, you'll see it from your smart guides. Click, drag, shift not again, and choose a size and change it to white for the cup. So we've got contrast between the cup and the saucer. You then want to click in the center again, drag, shift, alt, drag out, and that should be okay. You may want to change this to maybe the color of, of some sort of coffee. I'm just going to go with this color here. Uh, will I? I'll maybe go with this one, actually, because that looks better. Now, what you want to do at this stage is you want to click on here, rounded rectangle tool, and you want to just drag out a wee handle for your cup here. That's maybe a wee bit big. I'll just shrink it a little bit until I'm happy with it. I'm just going to change this to white. Now what I have to do here is I have to grab this white background cup thing and just copy and paste it. Now sorry, whoops, I will just do control shift V to copy in exactly the same place. I then want to just grab this one by pressing that and then press control on this. Oh, it doesn't want to add it. So what is another way I can do this is by locking the saucer like I've just done there and then locking the actual original cup and then if I just select over these two here that's them selected and then what I want to do is I want to uh, minus front with the Pathfinder tool that's not what I wanted actually so the way to get around this problem is if it's taking away the wrong bit you just want to swap these around in here so I'm just going to swap this so that this is underneath this so now when I do minus front using the Pathfinder tool, then I just get left with this bit. And then I just can unlock the saucer and the original cup bit here. The next thing I want to do is I want to grab the coffee and I want to control copy it. Control shift V, control shift V. I then want to move the top one that I copied down a little bit. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to lock all the layers from this one here all the way down to the grey saucer which is here and so now if I drag to these two I will get these disks and I just want to do minus front 
and it leaves me with a wee crescent around here. And one other thing which is helpful is if I go back to the book here. Now, starting from the the wee bookmark right down to the orange, press and shift click. But that's not going to work. If I want to just actually select in here, then press Control G to group it. If I just double click and I can name the group to book and I then want to just grab the keyboard as well uh, not move the keyboard certainly um, zoom out maybe a wee bit grab the keyboard group and this just stops the layers bit here from getting so cluttered uh, I should have done that earlier I've just realized that just now so now if I go back to my cup here and we've got a crescent here and I just want to make this a wee bit darker so if I go back to my colour bit up here, and what I'm going to have to do is just move this along a wee bit, move this along a wee bit, and then move this along a wee bit. Actually, maybe make that a wee bit more subtle. And so here you've got your... I'm going to make that a wee bit more subtle again. Uh, okay. There we go. And so what you've got here is you've just got your shadow of the cup onto the coffee. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to unlock the uh, this one underneath the coffee and also the one underneath that. So now you've got these two and what you want to do is you want to drag, click like this, control G to group them. You want to name the group cup and then if you just double click on cup then this isolates it and what you can do in here is I can just add shadows onto these so if I go to graphic styles drag my shadow onto this one drag my shadow onto this one and now what I can do is I can just change the color of this to white and change the color of this to white. Now, so I'm just using the wee shortcut in the color themes to change it to white. Obviously you can still just drag it to the right here on all of these ones. Now this doesn't look quite right so what I can do is I can just grab this change the opacity of the, f the lower fill, this one here, to maybe 67% and that just makes it a wee bit lighter. And then I want to right click exit isolation mode now, the good thing about this is if now I click the group, I want to go to Opacity and see where it says Knockout Group here. I just want to click that, so we tick, and you'll notice now the shadows don't overlap as much and they're not as noticeable, that they're, they're totally different entities. Now, the final thing I want to do with this is I want to unlock the saucer and I just want to add a shadow onto that as well. Now again, this is just going to change back to orange. I can just change that back quickly in here. To grey there. And that is our cup here as well. Now the final thing you want to do with your cup is just simply to maybe, if there's any uh, adjustments to be made with the sizing or anything, uh, make them and finally click to the bottom bit which is the saucer here and to the crescent shift we press shift over the crescent that's not going to work I keep I keep uh, keep thinking that's going to work uh, what you need to do is you need to drag out onto here and then you want to do control G and I have not actually selected all of them because this one's locked okay so what you want to do is you want to unlock all of them then select across like this and then press Control G and that will group your layers and you just want to call this coffee cup. And that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Um, I'm sorry it's been a bit stop and start and that it's been quite slow to to go through but I just wanted to sort of give uh, even beginners a chance to be able to follow the tutorial particularly since there's some quite complex steps in creating long shadows. But hopefully that's helped you 
in in creating this and in the next part of this tutorial I'll show you how to create a few more items like uh, the computer screen and pens and, and, and various different things. Now obviously you can see this, this sort of style all across the internet. It's, it's becoming a lot more popular now. But thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like it and would like to see more, then subscribe, even possibly to see the next tutorial. And if you like the video, like it. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something today. And I will see you later.